Hi. Hi. Do you live around here? Uh, yeah, really close. Oh, what do you do for a living? Um, I'm a cookbook author and I make baking videos. Oh, cool. How much do you pay for rent? Uh, actually, I don't rent anymore. I bought a house. Oh, cool. Can you see it? Uh, yeah, it's actually right there. Don't, don't we work together? Wait, Aaron? Focky? Oh what, what are you doing in Kansas City? <laughs> Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Bake It Up A Notch. In fact, today we are at my house and I'm excited to take you inside for a little tour of my new kitchen and my new workspace. And as always, we're gonna bake a little something. I'm especially excited because this is the first episode of Bake It Up A Notch that we are filming in my new house and we're actually gonna be filming all this week making tons of exciting new episodes for you. So I can't wait to show you what's in store and what we've been baking in these ovens. I only have one. That was wrong. One oven. <laughs> for now. Okay, let's get going. I wanna show you what's inside, come on. Welcome to my new kitchen. It's not 100% what I'm dreaming it will be. But the one thing that I love about this kitchen is it is so big. I have a huge central island. Eventually I wanna replace this island, get myself a second oven. But for now, I've made myself at home in this space and it just feels so good because I was in transit for so long and I missed it so much. So a few of my favorite things in this kitchen, I have a cupboard of spices and extracts. It's sort of like flavor central. I have, instead of kind of a traditional pantry, I have a built-in wall shelf that has a lot of commonly used ingredients. We've got our refrigerator. We've got a few different pegboard walls, which I'm still sort of finessing, but have a lot of fun things on them like sprinkles, my dinner bell you know, important things to the kitchen. I also like to make sure that the kitchen is a comfortable space for my best friend. So my friend Brimley, of course, has a designated feeding and watering area right here in the kitchen. And he also has a dog bed over there a little bit out of the way by my favorite set of stairs. We pretty much used every available storage space. We hang our pots and pans and all of my tools kind of right out where I can reach them. So that's my kitchen in a nutshell. It's a workhorse. Let's get started making our pastry layers. We've talked about how to make rough puff pastry a million times here on Bake It Up A Notch. So go back and check some of our episodes that use it. It's a really fun, simple recipe. But also, if you don't feel like making homemade puff pastry, this is one time where this comes together really quickly if you wanna use some from the freezer section. Or one of my favorite recommendations, sometimes really wonderful bakeries will actually sell things like pie dough, pizza dough, and even puff pastry dough. This can be miles above the stuff that you get in the freezer section of grocery stores, so check it out. Or you can snag the link to the recipe in the video description below, and I recommend my favorite store-bought brand. Okay, so let's roll it out. I divided the dough in half. You're gonna use 24 ounces, which is usually two boxes of freezer store-bought puff pastry, or it's one recipe of my rough puff pastry. We're gonna just start with half of it. I'm gonna start rolling it out to about a quarter inch thick. And I'm not worrying so much about the exact shape because it's going to be larger than we need and we're gonna be able to trim it. But I do kind of want to keep it roughly rectangular in shape as I'm working. You are gonna to wanna to roll out your dough to flatten it slightly if you're using stuff from the freezer, make sure it's fully thawed. And we'll get it to about a quarter inch thick. That looks thin enough to me. Then we're gonna cut it into rectangles and we're kind of gonna cut them about two inches by four inches. They'll end up like nice little rectangular pieces. I did roughly measure these before I started, but I just kind of eyeballed this. So when you're done, you can always kind of make sure if any of them seem a little too big, you can just trim them a little bit. It really doesn't have to be precise. The most important thing is by getting them roughly even, the stacks will look a little bit prettier. Now, here comes an especially fun part. We need to dock all of the pastry. Folks at home can just do this with a fork, but I figured since we're touring my house today, I would show you one of my favorite fun tools, which is this dough docker. So I can get a lot of docking done in a few quick moves and it's really fun. A 
Okay, actually you can overdo it and I just pretty much almost did that. So moving on. <laughs> now, we can save this scrap dough, we can re-roll it out. The goal is to get about six pieces from each half of the dough. You can also freeze that scrap dough, use it for another purpose. So what I have here are two baking sheets. They're both lined with parchment paper right now, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my squares, or more rectangles, on one of these sheets. Then I'm gonna top it with another piece of parchment paper. And even though we've docked these, what we're going to do is we're going to weigh them down even further. By topping it with this additional piece of parchment paper, we're kind of protecting it. We're gonna prevent it from sticking to this pan. Then I'm going to put this other baking sheet on top. It really provides a perfect all over even weight. That's going to help keep these nice and flat because again, this is puff pastry. And if it's left kind of to its own devices, it's going to puff up a lot. And what you're gonna end up with is something really flaky and shattery, more croissant-like, instead of these really nice thin pieces that are still crispy and flaky and delicious, but a lot easier to get through with a fork or to bite into with your mouth. This is ready to go into the oven. If it feels sticky to the touch at all, you could also refrigerate this for a few minutes before you hit the oven. It's going to bake like this with the pan on top, for 15 minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we'll remove the pan and the parchment paper and we'll keep baking it while it gets a little bit nicer and golden brown until it's fully baked through. Into the oven it goes. Okay, we've got that in the oven. Let's go check out some more of the house. This is the entryway of my home. My home was built in the early 1900s. So it definitely doesn't have lots of closets or things of that nature. So we've sort of found ways to hang stuff on the wall here in the entryway. And then I also have one of my favorite things right when you walk in are my big baking cabinets. These go almost all the way to the ceiling and contain a huge amount of my baking equipment. So all of the different pans, and different things that we use. A lot of the most used stuff is right here. You can see my favorite pie plate right at hand level. So these are always really fun. Organizing these was a very happy day for me in the unpacking process. Old houses have a lot of nooks and crannies that are sometimes kind of unusable space. So I was so excited to find kind of a corner piece that fit pretty well here. And the shelves are small, but they're perfect for holding my bud vase collection. And it's always sort of rotating because we're using some to have flowers around the house. But there's also one really fun thing in here that I've been saving. I just can't bear to get rid of it or eat it, though eventually I'll have to. But on book tour, a fan made this for me and brought it and it's a Brimley cookie. He's eating a little birthday cake. It's actually the cookie cake that we made on Bake It Up A Notch, which is like, if that's a level of detail that we really come to appreciate from our notchies. <laughs> One of my friends asked me when I was on book tour, they said, what do you call the fans of Bake It Up A Notch? And sometimes I've used different terms and even right now on Instagram, I have a group called Flake Friends and we all love flakiness, obviously. But one of my friends suggested, do you call them notchies? So if you're a notchy, let us know in the comments or if you have a better name. A notchy made this, which is a pie dish. When they handed it to me, they said, it's Concord grape pie because they know that that's one of my favorites, but it's a little dish. So the lid comes off. Since we're already in this corner, let's talk a little bit about all the goodness here. This is actually a picture of a mushroom pasta that my husband made. Um, he actually made this back in the days when he worked at Food 52 and Bobby Lynn shot this. We love Bobby. Here hanging from the sconce is a Beanie Baby and I swear I'm not entirely a Beanie Baby person. However, one year when I was a kid, my mom and I um, both loved bats and we loved this story when I was growing up called Stella Luna that's about a bat. And we had a bat that hung from our dining room chandelier and it was Stella Luna. And so one year um, back when Beanie Babies were popular, I got my mom this bat Beanie Baby. And when she opened it on Christmas morning, she laughed really hard. And that's because five minutes later, I opened a gift and it was the same Beanie Baby. And when I moved back to Kansas City, she 
gave me the bat and she said it should probably hang in your dining room. So here it is. This is a little writing desk that belonged to my grandma that I learned to make pie with. So my grandma Jean. And I always loved this desk when it was in her house. She kept things like playing cards and stationery and stamps in there. So that's what I've got mostly too. But most importantly, I have this, these stickers that say pie. So my entire house is still very much a work in progress, but this room is very special to me because I always dreamed about having the largest dining room table possible. And it's not just for hosting dinner parties, it's also because when we're shooting and doing work, we often have large quantities of things that we kind of need somewhere to keep them that isn't in the kitchen, but is very nearby. And the example right now, this isn't just for looks, we're shooting tomato pies for an upcoming episode of Bake It Up A Notch. And so I've got tons of tomatoes here. And it used to be that things like this would just always get shoved. They'd be on like a folding table. They'd be in a corner in a bag. And what I love now about having a bit more space is that I can actually just display these things and it can just be kind of part of our life and we can enjoy the beauty of them as well as what we're about to bake them into because this room is right off the kitchen, I use it for more storage. So there's sort of nooks and crannies with some of my small little pastry tools, things like piping tips. My whole sprinkle collection is in here. And there's also extra food processors and blenders and extra bowls for my stand mixers and all of my ceramic baking dishes. Plus some beautiful art, some pie. There's a picture of Brimley over there that my friend Heath painted. Sometimes it's a great place for a party, but a lot of times this table is full with stuff we're working on and people on computers working too. Okay, our pastry has baked and cooled and it's looking really lovely. As you can see, we have really nice little rectangle shapes and it's okay if they're not totally perfect. For the most part, these match up really, really nice and we'll be able to make a nice stack of three. So we can kind of set this pastry aside for a second and work on our filling. So our filling is a mixture of two very delicious things. One is a very kind of staple in the pastry kitchen. Professional pastry cooks know a lot about making this. It's called pastry cream. It's essentially sort of a thick custard that you make on the stove top. And I've talked about it here on Bake It Up A Notch before, but I'm gonna dive into it even deeper in an upcoming episode that we are doing the three-part Custard Spectacular. So keep an eye out for that. It's coming later this year to bake it up a notch and I could not be more excited. Today, I've already made my pastry cream because it has to chill down completely before we can turn it into our next component, which is known in professional pastry kitchens as Diplomat Cream. And really all this is is pastry cream lightened with a bit of whipped cream. So I'm gonna just whip a little bit of cream here in my mixer and I'm gonna whip it on medium high speed until it reaches medium peaks. Oh, that's looking really good. It's holding nice peaks and it's looking really thick, but it's not so stiff that it's gonna be difficult to fold into the pastry cream without over mixing it. Whenever you're folding whipped cream or meringue or something with a really light texture into something with a denser texture like this custard, you typically wanna do something called tempering. We've talked about this before on Bake It Up A Notch, but it basically means in this case, adding a small amount of the lighter consistency ingredient, in this case, the whipped cream, and mixing it in a little bit more thoroughly, that way we'll lighten the texture of the base and it'll be easier to fold in the rest of the whipped cream without over mixing. So I'm just gonna be a little bit more generous in how I mix this. The base is lightened in texture, so I'm going to add the remaining whipped cream in about two additions. Let's do the last bit of whipped cream. And we're just gonna fold until it all looks like one consistency and texture and color. The vanilla sauce has egg yolks in it, so it's a lot more yellow than the whipped cream. So it will sort of end up a really beautiful, creamy ivory color. Okay, when this happens, this is what I do. It's chef snack. Okay, let's come back to this later. Let's go check out more of the house. On the other side of the entry is this room that we sort of call the shoot room. 
That's why it's largely empty except for a bunch of tables. And you'll notice that most of the tables are on wheels. Things that are in this room are made to be moved around because this is where I shoot a lot of my content. So far since we've moved in, we've only had a couple of shoots in here. And while we're working on Bake It Up a Notch, which is what we're doing right now, we've got it set up for Derek. He's kind of doing some prep in here. So there's groceries, there's props, there's lighting equipment. There's all kinds of things that we're using for our shoot, but that kind of makes sense because this is the shoot room. So we use the whole first floor of the house for my work. This room is filled kind of floor to ceiling with props. And these cabinets are containing the majority of the different things that we use in both still photo shoots and video shoots to plate our food. So I've amassed this collection slowly through years and working on all three of my cookbooks. And this was absolutely, without a doubt, the worst part of moving here. So our Diplomat cream. I'm going to go ahead and put some into a pastry bag. In this case, I put a little star tip in the pastry bag. This is sort of a medium sized star tip. You just want about a half an inch opening and you actually wouldn't even have to use a tip at all. You could just dollop it on and use a small offset spatula to spread layers. I just happen to think this is kind of an easy way to apply it and it also looks really beautiful because you see the texture from the piping tip as you stack the layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in. And this will be enough for another round of uh, the pastry layers as well. And then I've got my little serving platter. So I'm just gonna build these right on the plate. It'll be a little bit easier on me. All right, I've got two pastry layers down and I'm just gonna start piping lines across the pastry, kind of like a little shell border until I get to the other side. And you do kind of wanna stay just about an eighth of an inch away from the edge because as you add more pastry on top, it is going to push out just a tiny bit. So I'll go until I filled the whole thing with little pieces of Diplomat cream. Okay, now on top of that first layer of cream, we will place another pastry layer and we'll press down just slightly. And then we'll pipe again. I finished it off with just a little bit of a whipped cream squiggle on the very top. And I'm just gonna finish it with some fresh strawberries. If you want, you can macerate the strawberries in a small amount of sugar, but in this preparation, it can make it really soggy really quickly. So I actually just like to use fresh, really ripe strawberries or whatever fruit you have that is ripe and in season because anything pairs great with puff pastries and cream. This can really be as fancy or as rustic as you want. So you can actually see my shapes don't match up perfectly. So it can really be a fancy, precise dessert or it can really just be a very delicious combination of flavors and textures with kind of whatever customizations that you want. Mmm, those are good strawberries. Other chef snack. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know that it really bothers people and they let us know in the comments in the rare occasion that I do not take a bite of this food. But I wanna take both of these to my next door neighbor to show you one of my favorite features of the house. Oh, and I have to show you this funny thing that our neighbor's dog does. Look, he's sneaky up the stairs. Do you see him? Here he comes. First, his little head pops over and he moves in slow motion. He's so cute. Okay, so there's a little door in my fence and I can just open it like this and... Hello! I've got some pastries for you. They're puff pastry and cream and fresh strawberries. So I know, I know they're on like a large plate, but forgive me in this instance, I didn't put them in a box and no rush to return it either. <laughs> I'm so glad you enjoy. And we love seeing the dog friends as always. <laughs> 
When I came, I said to Derek, I said, oh my gosh, it's a pie door. It's like exactly the right size for a pie. It was meant to be. This is my house. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Bake It Up A Notch where I gave you a tour into my new house. As always, the recipe we made in this episode is linked in the video description below. So go head down there and make these for yourself. And if you do, please use hashtag Bake It Up A Notch because we always love to see what you're baking in your kitchens. I'm so excited for the rest of the season of Bake It Up A Notch that we have coming up. We have so many incredible episodes for you in store this summer. Until next time, as always, happy baking.